Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And this week we are talking about... Belliform corrosion. Ooh, right? Yeah, that's something that, you know, we know a lot of our viewers have other types of RVs like fifth wheels mm -hmm. and motorhomes and stuff. And if you do, uh, this probably won't be your video because this is really particular to Airstreams. And aluminum. But if you want to watch and laugh at us Airstreamers who have this problem, mm -hmm. uh, you can do so. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different stuff to include what it is... And what it's not, and we're going to dispel a couple of myths, right? Yes. So and we'll, we'll also make it an attempt to later on at correcting it to see if we can do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, there'll be a little bit of science too. I mean, come a on, little you bit of science, science and actually a little bit of history in, of Airstream as well, right? Yes. Because I think this goes back all the way to Wally Bayan. It does. So interestingly enough, if you want to stick around and see, it's just not going to be all science. Let's get into some filiform. First, let's dispel the biggest myth with filiform corrosion, and that is what? That it's caused by two dissimilar metals coming together. Exactly, it has nothing to do with two dissimilar metals coming together. That's galvanic corrosion, which is one of the reasons why, for example, you shouldn't use a brass plug in your aluminum atwood water heater. And if you want to learn a little bit more about galvanic corrosion and dissimilar metals, check out this video up here. And we did a little bit of fun science with that one, but it is not the case. But I can understand why some people might think that, because right. it seems like it does some, tend to form in these places, but we'll explain why. All right, so before we get going with this video, let's head inside to the lab and let's talk a little bit about what exactly filiform corrosion is. Okay, we're here in the Love Subbing Labs, and I promise this will be as painless as possible, but I think it is important to understand how filiform occurs, because that way you can better understand how to fight it and what causes it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first slide. And this first slide here is an ideal case scenario where you have your aluminum, it's completely covered with a beautiful clear coat, and the oxygen and water molecules just bounce right off, and that's kind of what you want. And now we see here a rivet supplied, and throughout the manufacturing process, rivets, screws, all kinds of fasteners have to be put together in order to assemble the Airstream. And as we can see from this article, oftentimes filiform occurs at the point of where rivets are, screws are applied. But you can see in this case, things are pretty perfect. That's a good thing. In this case, however, we see that there's been damage caused as that rivet was put in. Maybe the worker nicked the clear coat or some other form of damage occurred. And here's the key point in this entire thing, is that filiform corrosion can only occur when there's a damage to the clear coat, okay? So you have to have an area where the bare aluminum is exposed. Now that that bare aluminum is exposed, all of that water, all of that oxygen can then form onto the surface of that bare aluminum, forming a reaction that we're gonna take a quick look at. And that reaction is what's called the formation of a differential aeration cell. And that occurs when you have an area of an aluminum piece of metal in which there's a small area that has contact with water and oxygen, and the rest of the metal is completely cut off from any water or oxygen. What that does is it forms ions, the hydroxyl ions and the aluminum ions, the electrons can flow and that's going to form the reaction that's going to cause the corrosion. So as the reaction continues, eventually under the clear coat, aluminum trihydroxides will form and that's that white powdery material that's forming under the clear coat that's spidering out from the point of damage to the clear coat. So there you have it. That's how filiform corrosion occurs. Interestingly, on vintage Airstreams that have no clear coat, the filiform corrosion cannot occur. Why? Because you don't have that differential aeration sites that causes the corrosion to actually initiate. So it's all bare aluminum. So just like having bare, a complete clear coat, you don't have that differentiation so you don't get filiform with the older Airstreams. Now, of course, without the clear coat, you're gonna get oxidation of the surface, so you'll have to keep it polished, but you won't get that filiform. So if there's a good thing about filiform corrosion, it is that A, it is purely cosmetic. It doesn't actually affect the structure of the aluminum. That's another myth, right? That, yes. That people think that you got filiform corrosion yeah. and, and my aluminum is going to be destroyed. Right. And I was one of those people because I remember getting the filiform, this, the filiform around this little guy here showed up probably five years or so after we got the Airstream. And I kept thinking, you know, there's a lot of like 
pressure that you pull on this rubber thing around here. And I'm like, uh, some one of these days I'm going to do this number. I'm going to pull up a big chunk of aluminum because it's all corroded and that's going to suck. But it's not like rust. It is not like rust. And that brings us to the next point is that it doesn't actually propagate forever. So it usually the research that we've shown says it goes anywhere from one to 10 millimeters, the filaments. So you can see here, it kind of went up that that's 15 years of corrosion at that area. It peaked, it happened, it stopped. So it's not like it's going to look like it's this. It's not going to spread farther than it. Again, it's not like rust. It's not going to damage the material and it's not going to spread forever. So if there's a good kind of a silver lining or whatever to getting it, that's it. Okay, what's the second myth that we're going to dispel here with filiform? We're going to dispel the myth that filiform corrosion only happens on older airstreams or airstreams that have been neglected in some way. Right, because we've seen that filiform corrosion occurs from a defect when the trailer is being manufactured. So it can happen to any trailer if the perfect storm of elements occurs. Mm -hmm. And this happened once in an instance that this article that we're going to link below happened around 2011, where a state truck dumped a load of magnesium chloride next yep. to a trailer. They were salting the roads and at they the were time. Salting the, it was in the wintertime. They were salting the, salting the roads, and it caused the perfect storm. So describe that. Yeah, so what happened was all that magnesium chloride, all those rock, stones, uh, salt, hit the side of the trailer, damaged the clear coat. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you had, even worse, you had a salt being exposed to the water. So not only do you have water and that um, uh, differential uh, aqueous reaction, but now you add salt, which makes it even more efficient, and that trailer was just destroyed. There was a picture of it in that article that just shows it yep. was everywhere. Yeah, they and, totaled it, and right? And they had the total of the trailer, absolutely. So that begs the question, because I know it's going to be asked, mm -hmm. will ceramic coating prevent filiform? And I think it won't prevent it, and, this, and comment below if you have a different opinion, but I think it will make it more resistant. Yeah, exactly. So in that instance where the poor soul was driving along on the road and they got hit with all that magnesium chloride or a rock or any other type of thing that hits the surface of your stream, then yeah, that harder ceramic coating mm -hmm. is going to help to protect it. Right. And probably if they had had ceramic coated theirs, mm -hmm. they probably would have been okay. I'm not sure the technology existed around then, but uh, yep. yeah, I think that their trailer might have survived that. The thing that I'm not sure about is the ceramic coating is, as you can see, it's mostly prevalent around screw holes, defects in manufacture. So, you know, if you're not going to get all of that stuff, if you're not going to take off all the reflectors, the belt line, the, mm -hmm. all that stuff, if that you stuff know, stick, doesn't come off. Stickers or anything like that, right? Or, ex or even uh, the, your Airstream logo, right? Exactly. All those things where you're screwing holes. If you don't take that stuff off and then overcoat that with the ceramic, well, then you might be susceptible to it. So mm -hmm. I think ceramic coating could be good for that occasion. But uh, it's yet to be seen because it's relatively new, but I'm not sure about those defects in manufacturing, if that's going to help we'll, it. Well, we'll see. Yet to yeah. be seen, right? right? We don't know. We right. don't know. But, but here's the thing. I don't think it could hurt. No. Except your pocket. Yes. It'll hurt your pocket for yes. four grand. Yes. We don't ceramic coat. No. So some of the things that you can do to prevent, not really prevent, but make it less likely that you do get filiform corrosion is maybe not dry, driving your Airstream during the winter, or if you do, make sure you wash it off and make sure all those salts on the road come Right, because the salts just make it worse. Right. Um, if you are living in a low humidity environment, like the desert, that will help prevent the filiform corrosion. If you're in a high humidity environment, or in a high temperature environment, you know, that's going to be a little bit more of a factor for you. Also, if you're in a salt salt weather or a salt beach environment right. can also increase your odds of getting the filiform corrosion as well. Right. The research that we says says that filiform will not occur below 60% humidity. That's the humidity level you need. And like we've said before, salt just makes it worse. And high temperatures also make it worse as well. Make any reaction worse, right? Absolutely. So the next question becomes, is this inevitable? Is it preventable? Can we never have filiform corrosion on aluminum? Sure. And like we said in the lab, if you have an older Airstream that's just bare aluminum with no clear coat, you're not going to get it. But you get oxidation and you're going to have to polish it. So Airstream went from that bare aluminum mm -hmm. to a better idea, which was the clear coat. Right. I once had a manager tell me, Rich, 
you do realize whenever you solve one problem, all you do is you generate other problems. Right, and so we went from the oxidation problem and having to polish your Airstream to the clear coat, and then we got the resulting filiform corrosion. Right, but there is one way to prevent it, right? Well, you can take your clear coat off completely, or, or you can be Wally Byam. And what did Wally Byam do? He actually anodized his trailer. Right, anodization is a process in which you take, an it's kind of like electrochemical plating mm -hmm. of material onto the aluminum, and that creates such a surface that you're not going to get any filiform it's, forming. It's basically a method of controlled oxidation. Right. So you're oxidizing your trailer, but it's a controlled way, so it supposedly looks better. Right. And Wally Byam had this vision of all these trailers coming in pastel colors back Yeah, he didn't, he, he didn't want Airstreams in silver. He thought they could come in light blue, yellow, all different kinds of colors. Maybe even pink. Right. And, but his best trailer ever was this one here, which he took on the Cape Town to Cairo uh, rally in 1959, 14,000 miles with this 22-foot uh, trailer that he had anodized gold. Right. Well, why didn't they do that? Well, in, there's the big question. Why didn't Airstream decide to do this process for all their trailers? Well, the big problem was is that they did it panel by panel, and as a result, the results came out differently for each panel. And right. So based on weathering, based on UV lighting, and what parts got hit by different elements, the different pieces started looking different, and there was no uniformity in color. Right, and that's probably why the Airstream Heritage Center which is called the Mothership. They actually have Wally Byam's gold trailer, but they painted it gold because the anodization just didn't hold up and looked pretty crappy. So that's why Airstream never went with this method. And I think the best method with the technology they had at the time was the clear coat if yep. you wanted a shiny aluminum trailer. All right. There's one other way that you can kind of sort of prevent it. Um, and that is what the airline industry does because a lot of aircraft these days are made out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. And you can see from this picture here when Boeing is building triple sevens, they are taken and putting a zinc chromate on it. And that is designed specifically to avoid corrosion, both oxidation, filiform, everything else. So it's that extra layer. Unfortunately, it comes with the side effect of making the whole product green. I think that would look awesome. Not I think, a green trailer? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. Oh, okay. Maybe they could pigment it. But huh? yeah, that's an extra step that um, obviously you couldn't have the green trailer. So we're left with the silver one. But that's some of the ways in which to prevent it. So now that we've got it, Let's go ahead and get Cindy to go ahead and try and fix it and see how she does. So what type of tip are you using on your Dremel? This is a really soft tip, so I don't want to damage the clear coat or the aluminum, so it's not going to be like a sanding tip. This is more like a buffing tip like you use for like a polish, I think. Yep. So it's taking some of the white stuff off. Not sure doing much for the gray stuff but uh, it's a start we'll see maybe if I clean it up a little bit it'll look better but that's about all I'm gonna do with that okay so what are you gonna use to clean it up with the start uh, this is some alcohol yep that's like what's kind of recommended so see if that helps it at all looks better but like I said it could not have looked much worse so Yeah, really all you're doing is you're removing the aluminum hydroxide there. Is that what the white stuff is? Yep. I think it actually looks worse. You think it does? <laughs> well, at least with the white stuff, it kind of blends it in. Yeah, I know. Bit. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Well, see, it took care of the, that white stuff. Yep, and turned it gray. Well, gray may blend better than the white stuff. Who knows, once it's dry. So what have you got there? Some really expensive Rust X corrosion preventer, thirty-four dollars and ninety cents, according to the uh, price tag. So, let's we'll see if it's worth it. Looks green, huh? That's interesting. Didn't you say that they painted those aircraft green? Yeah. I wonder if this is the same stuff. And that supposedly neutralizes the corrosion. Hmm. Let's see what it does. It's expensive stuff. There you have it. All right, well. There's our fix for... Well, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, we'll take a look at it tomorrow. Yep. 
should be good. So, and our final step will be to spray it with some acrylic lacquer. I guess that's a sort of a sealant that yeah, will go yeah, on top it's, it's of the Yeah, it kind of simulates the clear coat. Yes. So hopefully that'll arrest this problem and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, well, there you have it. Everything you always wanted to know about filiform corrosion, but maybe we're afraid to ask. Or maybe you didn't want to know. Or like, just didn't even want to think about it. Absolutely. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you've had the filiform corrosion and what you did to help fix it. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.